Hi, my name is Eamon Shaban. I'm a specialist in the area of fetal surgical intervention and the director of the Chicago Institute for Fetal Health at Lurie Children's, one of a few comprehensive fetal care centers in the country. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia, or CDH, is a diagnosis that affects more than 2,200 babies per year in the United States. CDH is a birth defect in which the diaphragm does not completely form, leaving a hole that allows the abdominal organs to pass through, entering the chest, and inhibiting lung growth. This can cause a series of problems after birth, namely breathing problems as the lungs have not developed adequately. The diaphragm is a thin muscle that separates the organs of the chest, the lungs, and the heart from the organs of the abdomen, such as the liver, stomach, and intestines. Sometimes, very early in fetal development, the diaphragm fails to completely form or close properly. 90% of all defects are found on the left side of the diaphragm. Depending on how large the hole is, the abdominal organs move into the chest cavity, causing the lungs to develop poorly, so that the baby is born with a smaller number of air sacs, blood vessels, and airways. The organs press against the lungs, slowing down lung development, even as the rest of the baby's body continues to grow. CDH can cause two main complications in babies, lung hypoplasia and pulmonary hypertension. Lung hypoplasia means small, underdeveloped lungs, which results in the baby having difficulty breathing. If a baby develops pulmonary hypertension, it means they have high blood pressure inside the lungs as the blood attempts to pass through the blood vessels to provide oxygen. To determine the severity of the condition, we will perform a specialized fetal ultrasound, a fetal MRI, and a fetal echocardiogram. Together, these tests will provide an overview of the anatomy and growth of the baby and will allow us to measure the development of the baby's lungs relative to normal babies at the same gestational age. Depending on the findings, individualized patients are classified as having either mild, moderate, or severe disease. After our multidisciplinary team of experts determines the severity of the diagnosis, the best course of treatment is recommended for the patient and her baby. If the diagnosis is mild or moderate severity, the outcomes are excellent. As such, we recommend standard pregnancy care and delivery at our centers so the baby can be cared for immediately by the CDH team. Surgery will be performed after birth once the baby has stabilized. The CDH team caring for the baby includes a neonatologist, a pediatric surgeon, a cardiologist, a neonatal dietitian, a neonatal nurse practitioner, a neonatal nurse, a physical therapist, a speech and language therapist, and a neonatal pharmacist. This large care team provides the highest quality specialized care for the baby. However, in severe cases of prenatally diagnosed CDH, we may recommend a FETO procedure to be performed between 27 and 30 weeks gestation. FETO stands for fetoscopic endoluminal tracheal occlusion. This two-step approach involves placing a balloon in the fetal windpipe before 30 weeks gestation to create a blockage that promotes lung growth through the accumulation of lung fluid. Then at 34 weeks gestation, the balloon is removed and the pregnancy is allowed to progress towards delivery at term. Let's walk through what happens during this procedure. The pregnant patient is prepared for surgery and given IV sedation and epidural anesthesia. Using an intraoperative ultrasound, the baby is given a shot of adjunct anesthesia. Next, a small incision is made in the patient's abdomen to allow access for the operating scope to enter the uterus under ultrasound guidance. A trocar, a type of access port, is then inserted into the amniotic cavity and the fetoscope is passed. The fetoscope is then introduced into the fetal mouth, then using the tongue, palate, uvula, epiglottis, and vocal cords as guides, the trachea is found and entered. The ideal position for the balloon is in the main trachea, just above the separation of the right and left main stem bronchi. Once in the optimal position, the balloon is inflated with fluid to block or occlude the trachea. The balloon is then deployed and left in place. The proper position of the balloon is confirmed before the fetoscope is removed. The balloon is left in place for four to six weeks to accelerate lung growth. The pregnant patient and fetus are carefully monitored on a weekly basis until the balloon is removed. At 34 weeks gestation, the balloon is released in one of two ways. The fetoscope will be inserted into the mouth, the balloon will then be grasped, 
and punctured and removed from the fetal airway in a reverse procedure compared to the placement. In some cases, the balloon may be punctured under ultrasound guidance. The balloon is deflated and pushed out of the baby's mouth by the buildup of lung fluid behind it. Following balloon removal and the short postoperative recovery, the patient returns home and is closely monitored. Ideally, the pregnancy will continue to full term, at which point the baby is delivered. At the delivery, a newborn with a diaphragmatic hernia is usually unable to breathe on their own because of poor lung development. Essentially, all babies need help from a breathing machine called a ventilator, as well as assistance with feeding to grow and develop. After birth, the newborn with CDH needs at least a few days to stabilize before surgery to repair the CDH is performed. There are two types of surgery to close the diaphragmatic hernia, open surgery and thoracoscopic surgery. Let's walk through these procedures. For larger defects, the repair is done on the underside of the diaphragm through the abdomen. This is called open CDH surgery. Here, the contents of the hernia are removed from the chest cavity and gently placed back into the abdomen. If the hole is small enough, the diaphragm will be stitched closed. If the hole is large, we will use the innermost layer of the lateral abdominal muscle to create a muscle flap to repair the hernia. The muscle flap is developed, then rotated and stitched to cover the defect. In some cases, a Gore-Tex patch is used to repair the defect. If there is enough room, the incision is closed primarily at the first operation. Alternatively, if there's not enough room in the abdomen, a temporary abdominal wall silo is used to cover the organs for a couple of weeks until the abdomen can grow and the incision can be closed completely. In more mild CDH cases with stable physiology, the hernia can be corrected with a minimally invasive procedure through the chest wall called thoracoscopic surgery. For thoracoscopic repair, three 3 mm ports are inserted through the chest. The instruments are passed through and the herniated contents are visualized. The surgeon replaces the organs back through the defect into the abdomen. Once all the organs are back in place, the defect is closed with sutures. A series of intracorporeal and transthoracic sutures are applied to the diaphragmatic edge. With Teflon pledgets in place, the sutures are tied to close the diaphragmatic defect. The hernia repair is tested with a suction. After the repair is complete, the ports are removed and the incisions are closed. The amount of time the infant will stay in the neonatal ICU depends on how they are progressing with breathing, feeding, and growing. As they continue to grow on the outside, their lungs and other organs are growing on the inside. Ultimately, the vast majority of babies with CDH will go on to live a normal, active, and healthy life. Some babies need more follow-up medical care than others after they return home. This may include care for lingering lung disease, pulmonary hypertension, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and other developmental problems. Many of these problems can be treated with medications and therapy, allowing the child to have a better quality of life. Here again, the importance of a team of CDH specialists provides the best chance for long-term success. At the Chicago Institute for Fetal Health, our team of experts will follow these children into adulthood, providing interdisciplinary care along the way. Our team will ensure you and your baby's care is individualized and complete throughout your child's life.